Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Monday. Oh, this the date was wrong in here. Monday, April 11th. <coughs> I just noticed the. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> um, Tom is not with us tonight, so we've got uh, just Crystal and I. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's dive right into it. Uh, our we're going to approve our minutes from last Monday's meeting, April fourth. I motion we approve the minutes from mm -hmm. April fourth. I'll second. All those in favor of the minutes from April fourth. Aye. Aye. Right. Two to zero on that one. And we only have one new business item tonight, and then we have um, just a, some placeholders for our fiscal year 23 budget, our uh, annual town meeting warrant and motion review. I don't know if we need to talk about that tonight, but we've got uh, potentially any ARPA discussions, any select board and town administrator updates coming up. So, but first we have an update from 120 North Main Street on that project. So who, who, uh, who was the lucky individual who's gonna Update us on that tonight. Hi, everyone. Um, so, um, hi, I'm Alyssa LaRose. So hey, I'm Alyssa. the Housing Development Director at Rural Development, Inc. in the uh, Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Um, so I'm going to um, kind of lead the presentation tonight, but I'm joined by um, Gina Govoni, who's our Executive Director, and Pam Parmikian, who's our Director of Property Management, um, who are going to help with answering any questions that folks um, might have. And Jeff, do you um, do you have the, the slides or do you want me to share my screen? What makes sense? Either way, I have them. Uh, the ones you sent, I can share or you can. Um, I have them up, so I guess I'll go ahead and, and do, do that. Um, so <clears throat> let me view this in full screen. Yeah, oh, we can see it now too. So, <clears throat> so everyone can see that. Yep. Yeah. Great. So we, so RDI wanted to um, kind of give an update to the Sunderland Select Board and the Sunderland community on the progress of Sanderson Place Senior Housing. Um, I know that most of you um, are very familiar with this project. Um, this project would not be happening without the um, persistence and work of um, the 120 North Main Street Committee, as well as a number of other town staff and officials. Um, so this really was a community initiated project um, and we you know, are greatly appreciative of all the work that the town has, has done to make this happen. Um, so this project is being developed by Rural Development Inc. in partnership with Valley Community Development Corporation. And so our, our um, all-star project manager, Laura Baker at Valley CDC has been really awesome to work with and is, is really, um, has been championing this um, whole, whole uh, project through this process and, um, and it's, it's going well. <laughs> so I'm gonna give an update on some of the construction. And then we also wanted to update you all on kind of the next steps which will be marketing of uh, Sanderson Place to potential residents and applications and selecting residents and then moving in the fall. So we wanted to just provide an overview of that and see if there were any questions um, from folks in Sunderland. So this is just an overview of some of the great features of the development. Um, so the total unit count is 33. There's 30 units in the new building out back and three units in the village house. Um, and these are for senior housing. So the bathrooms are accessible. Um, some of the units are fully accessible. It's all visitable um, by folks with, uh, in wheelchairs. Um, if you've seen the site uh, just in the last week or so, you'll see that um, PV squared is on site. They're starting to install the solar PV. So we've got solar that will be at the site. Um, the heating and AC is all electric. Um, so there's a lot of really great kind of green building and energy efficiency measures um, that are going into the building. Um, and then in terms of kind of resident amenities, there's a beautiful community room that has views to the fields out back behind the building. And I think I have some pictures showing that. Um, we have an outdoor deck 
um, that will be back there as well that's in under construction. Um, there'll be a fitness room, on-site laundry, as well as um, weekly meals and programming by LifePath. So LifePath is partnering uh, with us on uh, for ongoing um, resident support and programming. Um, so we're really excited about that partnership as well. Um, and just this, again, is just an overview. I know a lot of folks um, uh, are probably already familiar with some of this information, but most of the units are one bedroom. They're a decent size. They have a nice open kind of living um, kitchen and living concept um, and some good sized closets. <laughs> um, and then we do have uh, a few two bedroom units that offer that additional space. So some construction updates. Um, so this is a, a picture of the village house, which is the original house on the site that was restored. Um, and then there was a new addition added to the back. So there's three units in the village house, all on the first floor. Um, so overall construction um, is about 60% complete. Um, they're doing insulation, drywall, mechanicals are all under well underway. <laughs> It's all kind of happening. They're working kind of from the top down and lived in the main building. Um, as I mentioned, solar PV is being installed. Um, we are facing challenges in terms of um, escalating costs and some delays in material availability. Um, and the team on site has been working really, really diligently to kind of address um, all the different all the different challenges that have come up. Um, and we are still on track for completion in late August. We are still within our budget. <laughs> and so we're, we're plugging along. Um, and we are hoping for a tentative ribbon cutting and open house on September 15th. Um, so we will definitely be coordinating with the town on um, kind of a, a big event to celebrate um, the completion of this project. Um, and it will be a really beautiful time of year. And then I was just going to share some photos. So the photos on the top are from earlier in the construction process, but they just show some of the really beautiful views um, from the main building, the building in the back. Um, and the one on the upper right is the community room. Um, so it has really nice big windows um, out to the fields. Um, <laughs> And then the bottom picture is uh, recent. It's from last week or two weeks ago, from the backside of the of the building. And it, you can see, you can kind of see the deck um, that's under construction back there, um, and that's where there'll be some outdoor seating uh, space. And then this, um, I took these pictures last Thursday. These are the interior of one of the units in the village house. So the village house is furthest along in terms of kind of the finishes. Um, and we're, we're, Marios, the general contractor, is going to kind of fully complete one of the units as a, as a mock-up unit. So that's the, um, this is that unit. Um, and it's just really exciting <laughs> to see the flooring going in and we're going to have appliances and things like that soon. So it's, it's pretty exciting. So um, the next step is to start really getting the word out there that, that these apartments are going to be available and um, we want people to apply. <laughs> and so our schedule for marketing is um, we will be getting well, we, we will begin um, kind of advertising by April 22nd. Um, there's a little bit of kind of, uh, there's a chance that, that our schedule may shift slightly. We are waiting on HUD um, to publish the fiscal year 2022 income limits, which will be what, what we're using to base um, income eligibility for this, this project, and normally they, they um, publish them April 1st, and they haven't published them yet. <laughs> so we are anxiously awaiting um, that information because uh, we, need, we need it in order to let folks know, you know, what are the income limits, the rents are based off of that as well. 
So some of the information that we'll show in here are um, kind of um, preliminary until we get that, that information, but it gives you an idea. But um, ultimately, we're hoping that we can stick to this schedule. Um, and so we have a lot of events planned, especially with the South County Senior Center, um, uh, to kind of get the word out and to help uh, answer questions about the application process. And then we have three information sessions planned. Um, the first one will be at the Sunderland Public Library um, on May 4th. And these are in person. And we will have staff there who can help um, help people with their applications and answering questions. Um, so these are really great events for folks to attend if, if you're interested um, in applying for a unit. Um, and then right now we have applications due on June 22nd. Applications need to be complete. Um, and, and if you don't meet the deadline, you're, you're not in. <laughs> so it, it is a strict um, you know, deadline. Um, and then um, the lottery is planned for July 13th. And this really kind of places applicants in the order that their applications will be processed for kind of to, to determine full eligibility. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you win a unit. So we will be then reaching out to folks to kind of complete the um, application process after that. And so we hope that folks will be able to start moving in um, beginning in September. Um, we will need to kind of phase the move in um, and through winter, but hopefully by by spring we'd be fully fully leased up. And so just a little bit of um, information on some of the kind of minimum eligibility requirements. So um, the head of household must be age 62 or over um, as of the lottery date, which right now is July 13th. Um, and also combined household income has to be at or below 60% of area median income, which is based on household size. These incomes that are on the slide here are the 2021 income limits. So this is what is going to change. And so this at least gives you some um, understanding of kind of ballpark where the income limits will fall, but they may, we are estimating that they'll probably go up a little bit, but we just, we don't know until HUD publishes them. And then, um, you know, as, as I mentioned, applications must be returned complete, um, but this is where, you know, we can help uh, with, with answering questions and, and um, especially at the information sessions. Okay, good. So one thing that um, I know Sunderland folks may be interested in is the local preference aspect of the, the um, development. Um, so there is a local preference. This applies to current Sunderland residents um, folks who are currently employed in Sunderland, and also um, any households that have children enrolled in Sunderland schools. Um, so I know this is senior housing, but it may be possible that you've got a grandparent um, taking care of a grandchild, um, and that's totally, totally fine. And they could get local preference if they're enrolled in the Sunderland schools. Um, and so what that means is they get placed, your application would get placed in two of the, the pools for the lottery. So you have a greater um, chance of, of getting a unit. Um, and then the, the maximum rent, again, these are all subject to HUD, um, the more recent HUD income limits. So this is, again, kind of a ballpark. Um, um, there's one bedrooms and two bedrooms, and then there's additional subsidy for 12 of the units that will allow for residents to pay 30% um, of their income for rent, um, and the rest of it would be um, subsidized. Um, and so there are varying kind of affordability levels. The 60% area median income is kind of the, the top, and there are other um, levels of affordability. So we would encourage folks to apply. Um, you know, even if you're, you're lower income, um, we encourage folks to apply. Um, and I know that's a lot of detail, <laughs> so that's why Pam and Gina are here to help answer any questions. But um, pretty soon you'll see this big green sign out front of uh, Sanders in place. Um, <laughs> applications will be made available on our website as well as um, as hard copies 
at the town office, the Sunderland Public Library, Senior Center, and at our offices. Um, and we'll have more information on our website um, on how to apply. Okay, and hopefully we can put some links on our site too, which would be great to link to your stuff. Yes. So, excellent. Yeah, uh, we would love we would love that. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing. If there's any questions. Excellent presentation as always, Alyssa. Thanks. Um, does anybody in the room here have any questions at all? Jeff? I have two questions. Um, the first one, Alyssa, the local preference doesn't apply to all 33 units, right? It, um, there's How many are eligible for local preference? Um, yeah, I got that. Um, I got that. Um, so, you're, you're correct. The, the maximum allowed local preference in any project is 70%. So out of the 19 mm -hmm. self pay units, 16 of those will have local preference. Okay. Thank you. And then sure. the other question that I had was looking at the list of amenities. Um, I know the select board has asked several times or said that it would be really nice in some way to honor the previous owners by you know naming a gallery or a garden or a community or just having a plaque say you know and i just wanted to raise that again in case it fell through the cracks or there's still time to do something like that i don't i don't want to speak for the select board but no. i know that it was discussed previously yeah and, yeah like the community room or something is yeah good. yeah so Thank you, Jeff. But that's something we can certainly, we're, we're right in the process now of looking at our work and signage, and it's something we are planning to weave in. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And it was good to see um, so many information sessions, too, you know, w with and without the senior center, because, you know, you want to be able to reach folks who aren't involved in the senior center and things like that, too. So that's good to see. <clears throat> And we'll have website links and everything. So, <clears throat> does anybody on the phone have any questions? Do you have one more question, Jeff? You look no, like you're no. I, I was just thinking that. I, I was just thinking that we want to do almost a mailing to everyone in town who's sixty-two and over. Well, that's like something to think about too. Us, not not right. you. I'm just <laughs> Um, with some of the um, session information and things like that, because you we got to try every communication channel we can. Yeah, um, we can look at that. Just thinking of what we yeah. could. Yeah, you have a lot of stuff planned, and how we can help support that. Yeah, sort of yeah. where my head's going. Yeah, that would be great, Jeff. Um, yeah, I'll definitely coordinate with you and, and Cindy um, um, on one just the, the the materials we already talked about um, in terms of like having the application. available but if there's other um, ways to get the word out we have a flyer um, that that could go out or if if there's something else that we can um, put together that you think would be useful um, yeah happy to, to talk about that okay, great that'll be good and, you know every communication method we can use probably would and even you know you want to use everything you can use because even then still people won't hear about it so it's always good. Okay, great. Yeah, and it will be, I, I didn't put this on the slide and I meant to mention it, but there's a whole full um, list of advertising that we're required to do and that yep. you know we're happy to do. Um, so it will be coming out in the newspaper. Um, it'll be published on several online um, um, kind of housing search um, web pages. Um, it's, the, there's the flyer will go out to, um, I think it's like we have a list of 500 <laughs> regional and local organizations and partners. Um, so we definitely will be doing um, a lot of outreach, but if you have um, ideas um, that we might not be, be thinking about, we're happy to, to do more. So um, definitely um, just let us know. All right, great, thanks. Uh, really appreciate the presentation. It's good to see it coming along, so. Just one, one more question, mm, yeah. very, very quick. Um, the 
eligibility and um, and the rental is not going to be. It's going to change from year to year, right? Um, just just because one of the things that I've heard in the community is, hey, my rent's gone up so much. I you know from seniors who are interested in this project, I can't necessarily afford my unit, and I just want to clarify for them, it's not rent control. It's affordability, and so you may see, you know, um, slight increases based on whatever HUD says. Is that right? Um, yes, that's actually exactly right. Um, yeah, all the numbers are always driven by HUD. Those are those income limits that traditionally come out April first, and we 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 don't know why they're delayed this year, but um, we are expecting them to be released at the time now. But, but you're right, both the rents and the income limits are driven by that. Thanks, Pam. It's a good point. Sure. Just so people know. I just want to make one um, more note. I think Alyssa mentioned already that we're, we're tentatively planning on a ribbon cutting ceremony on September 15th. Yep. Um, that will be in the morning. And we would love for um, someone from the town to um, come and just um, speak briefly on behalf, behalf of the town um, at that ceremony. Um, we're, we're still uh, finalizing the details, and of course that is assuming that construction continues on schedule, which we've been very, very lucky with so far. Um, but that is, right now, that is our plan. Okay. I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to get Jeff a giant pair of scissors or something. <laughs> but yeah, I, I suspect <laughs> you'll be there at least, probably, right? And then... Yeah. And then maybe a select board members, depending on, because we work during the day, so depending on our schedules, but. Yeah, and we might get a 120 North Main committee member or something right. like that. Yep, so there'll definitely be somebody there, no question about that. Wonderful. So, all right, great. All right, well, thanks a lot. Appreciate your time, and thanks for the presentation. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second hop off. All right. Uh, next up, under our old business section, um, any our placeholder for our budget? Any uh, budget discussions for this evening? Uh, the only <clears throat> budget, uh, which is also the only change to the motions, is an updated figure for the warrant article to replenish capital stabilization change from 99,000 and change to 103,000 and change. Okay. Um, so a slight change to that, but otherwise I think, I think we're looking good. Okay. Or okay. we're looking balanced. Also. Balanced. Yes. <laughs> that's yeah. I'm never, I'm not sure I ever qualified as great, but you know, balanced is good. All right. Um, Next up, I don't know if we have to talk about anything on our warrant and motion review. I think without Tom here, we probably um, finish that up next week, I would suspect. So we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, we'll have more information on our numbers and things like that. So, yeah, I think the one thing that we probably need to talk about next week is there were a couple articles that we had initially put using free cash and then talked about ARPA and do we want that to appear on the warrant so yep. that we can talk about ARPA or do we want to okay. um, just scratch it, yeah. scratch those articles completely. <clears throat> That's right, because we had talked about maybe removing them or whatever, depending right. on, yep, okay. Um, and speaking of ARPA, that's our next topic. Oh, I, and I should mention that there's potentially one more article if the town decides to join the Tritown Beach Commission, we would need a vote, vote on town that. meeting. Yep, to join um, that. So, okay. that might be a surprise additional article. All right, that can happen sometimes. Sorry. Uh, uh, ARPA. Yeah, so ARPA, the first reporting deadline for March 2021 through March 2022 is do the day after town meeting. Um, so I'm collecting all the reporting information, but the one thing that we will have to decide before then is uh, the revenue replacement figure. And just brief background, um, because I'm sure people at home fascinated by this. <laughs> uh, originally they said, here's a, here's a spreadsheet, fill it out, and it'll calculate revenue replacement. When they had the final rule come out, they said, hey, 
that's too much work. Um, you, everybody can take up to $10 million maxing out at your actual allotment um, and use that as revenue replacement because it's the most flexible and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, Sunderland got under $10 million so we could yeah, we did. do our entire ARPA award as revenue replacement, um, which I, I it has fewer reporting requirements, it's more flexible, but this is a one-time designation. So this, we would be saying we're using all of it for revenue replacement. I think the one um, drawback to that approach is that um, it, the funds couldn't be, so the funds would be restricted to government services. So anything we typically do, budgeting, capital, if it's not we something use it we use for salaries, do. I know we don't typically want to use it for operating, but we could. Yeah. Um, the one thing that we couldn't would be economic recovery, direct yeah. economic recovery, because typically governments are Public not allowed business, to give so. money directly to organizations. Yeah. Okay. Um, but <clears throat> we have not been approached and asked for any money, and FERCOG was looking into developing a regional program, and I was coordinating with them saying, yeah, we might be interested, tell us about it. And apparently they did not get enough interest to make it worthwhile. So okay. um, for those reasons, I think that it's probably safe to do it, but I wanted to at least bring it forward at this meeting and then we can, you know, we have until April 30th. So I think two more meetings, okay. there needs to be more discussion. But. I mean, it seems like the way to go. I mean, you know, um, so we could we could talk about it. I mean, yeah. Know, generally, we're not in the business of making things more complicated and difficult if we can avoid it. So, and it, that seems to be the way most communities are heading. Um, yeah. I think last Makes week sense. or two weeks ago, Montague voted to do all their revenue. All yeah. their part, so, yep, that that's about it. All right, good. All right, thanks. Um, select board updates. I had nothing this week. It was mm -hmm. nice. I had a fun Hi. discussion last Thursday, I believe it was, about the boiler up at uh, Frontier. At front, yes, Frontier. They're having issues with uh, a leak in one of the two boilers. I can't remember if it's one of the first or the second one. So there was a lot of discussion around that. And they're going to do some more investigation to find out exactly what the issue is, you know, where the leak is and things like that. And then we'll make some decisions from there based on that. So... Um, because it's also an opportune time for not a lot of reasons too to maybe start thinking about something other than replacing it with old boilers so um, it's a lot of other especially if we're you know thinking about like you know units that do AC as well and things like that too so the time to start thinking about it if we can so there'll be more to come on that, I'm sure, as we get updates on that. So that's the only update I had this week. Um, do you have any updates, Jeff? Uh, just a couple quick ones. The <clears throat> framing for the kayak kiosk and storage shed is going up, so you can actually okay. see Yeah, that. it's looking good up there. Yep. Um, and I believe I drove by it today and it looks like the sidewalk down the boat ramp is done uh, oh nice the asphalt may still be setting because they had cones up yeah um, but that they, they did that really quick <laughs> I, I haven't actually been down so I haven't seen the crosswalk if it's painted or anything but um, that's exciting nice we are working the last bit of the South Silver and South Main um, complete streets project. There was some uh, additional loam and seating that needed to be done. So George is after, yeah. working on getting that done so we can close that project out. Excellent. We're also trying to do a final walkthrough with MassDOT and the contractors on North Main Street because there are some bare spots there as well. And so just Seated. go through the, the final punch list. They're hoping to wrap that project up this month yep. so that'll be good that would be nice to have that finished and so. yeah and then the only other thing is i got um a request for a couple letters of support for 
community-based projects that the FERCOG is doing. Um, one is to sort of develop a plan for smaller communities that rely on a significant portion of part-time police officers and how that may change with the um, new training requirements. And the second is to help subsidize the cost of pagers that work with the new radio system hmm. um, because I, I believe there's it's it, we're operating I think I don't want to speak incorrectly but I think we're operating on two systems and so for like our volunteers and volunteers in other communities in, yeah. in Franklin County um, you have to do a phone tree if you don't have pagers. Oh, if you yep. can't page, everybody and say, hey, who can get here? Um, and so we're trying to get uh, subsidized pagers to all of our, our okay. volunteer first responders. Well, that'd be good. So, yeah. All right. Nice. <clears throat> all right. Then we've got a few, um, well, actually, before I get to that, do we have any um, public comments tonight? I know it's been kind of a, a little bit of a lighter agenda tonight, sort of a little break before our next one, so. <clears throat> oh, all right. Um, we've got some important dates to remember because this is the busy time of year here in town. Our next meeting will be next Tuesday, April 19th. Uh, and just as a reminder, town offices are closed Monday, April 18th in observance of Patriots Day. And our annual town meeting will be Friday, the last Friday in April, as it always is. And this year it'll be April 29th, so we're looking forward to actually seeing everybody back together in a building again. So that'll be, that'll be good. Hopefully it won't be like 95 degrees like it has been some years. Yeah. Um, and then our annual town election usually is the following Saturday, but this year it'll be, um, no, it's usually the next day, I should say. But usually this year it will be on Saturday, May 7th, so it'll be a week and a day after the town meeting. So, um, and that, I believe, is our agenda for the evening. Unless anybody has any other comments or anything or questions. And if not, I'll grudgingly accept a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Looks like we got no questions, so mm -hmm. I motion we adjourn. All right, I'll uh, second that. All those in favor of adjournment at uh, 7.03 p.m.? Hi. Hi. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week, and uh, we'll see you next week.